everybody. everybody. This is Jenna. And I'm Noelle. And this is More Than Murder, where we delve into everything eerie with a side of true crime. More Than Murder is not your typical true crime podcast. Join us on a weekly tour through the haunted, the bloody, the creepy, and the nutty on our Freaky Fridays. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This episode is a two-in-one. Woohoo! We have Christmas, where both hosts, Jenna and myself, will be presenting one story each. We love these holiday episodes because yeah, we, we each do. get to do one. It's so fun. Yeah. This time, Jenna's going to go first, and yeah, yeah. we'll see what story she has for us today. So, we're not really delving into anything really spooky. I'm not upset. But we do have an old pagan celebration. I love that. From Roman time. Love that even more. Did you know that my ancestry is actually from ancient Rome? That's super cool. I am not Sicilian. I am I am ancient Roman. That hey I'm Italian. I yeah. am proud of my Scandinavian roots. I mean, I'm proud of all my roots. I, I I'm a I'm a mutt, obviously. Yeah, same. I'm a mix of <laughs> a lot of things. But for my Italian part portion, I am I am Roman. And that's super that's cool. cool. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Let's go in with my, my ancestry traditions. I must yes. have had ancestors that would partake. It is a raucous celebration. Yay! It's called Saturnalia. We should have our own. Saturnalia? Yes! Okay. I think that's a great idea. Because it's a lot like Christmas. Yeah. But it's a drunken good time. Well, let's do it. So, yeah. The pagan celebration is believed to have been started in 496 BCE. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And that um, is before Common Era. Mm -hmm. So a lot of historians believe that it might have actually been earlier, though. Historians believe that they found earlier hints to this celebration happening, but they they just picked this time because that's solid evidence. Okay. Um, It started as a harvest festival that lasted only one day. The Romans celebrated Saturn. And he was the god of agriculture. Okay. Yep. And I love a lot some of pagan. Saturn. Yeah, a lot of pagan traditions are based around seasonal changes and harvests yep. and things like that. Yep. So. Uh, as the Roman Empire transitioned through the years, the festival would do the same. So the festival hmm. ended up expanding. It would start on December seventeenth and last until around December twenty third. Hmm. And line up with the winter solstice. Okay. Yep. Yep, there we go. Changing of seasons. Yep. The solstices. Yep. And and basically, it, it would go from, like, one day to three days to seven days to five days. Like, each time that they change an emperor or anything, they would try to change the celebration. Well, ours is only going to be able to be, like, one evening into the night and then... Well, peace the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll let you know because there is a there is a culmination of all the days that okay. we will get into. All right. So the celebrations consisted of decorating homes with wreaths and greenery, and they even decorated trees. Okay. Yeah, they would make like little tin ornaments and stuff, uh-huh. and decorate their trees. I thought that was super neat. That is awesome. Forgive me for my not Italian lack of anything to try to pronounce this stuff uh but the poet catalyst called it quote the best of times cool yep so kind of like christmas you know yeah. it is really the best time the lights yeah the, the grandeur the joy the, yeah yeah oh it's amazing so the temple of saturn uh would be an especially important part of the celebration makes sense inside of that temple they had a large statue of saturn and it said that um, at his feet there were woolen bounds that were tied. Hmm. And for the celebration, they would loosen those to symbolize his liberation. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Really That's neat. really cool. I like that. They would also offer uh, leave offerings of food, most likely to promote a good harvest for next year. And then it's also said that they like did sacrifices of like pigs and stuff at the temple, which mm-hmm. it's, it's been Roman in, times, you know. It's, it's been in... All sorts of, I mean, geez, even Christianity has sacrifices in the Bible. Yeah, you know, it it happens. So Saturnalia was pretty much a huge party. (coughs) Huge party. Huge party, man. So in a HistoryToday.com article, they include a snippet from a poem called Saturnalia, which was written by Lucian of Samosata. Hmm. Yep. 
And it does a good job of summing up the absolute debauchery that was this festival. And it's written in the perspective of the god Saturn. Oh, cool. Okay. So, quote, during my week, the serious is barred. No business allowed. Drinking and being drunk. Noise and games of dice. Appointing of kings and feasting of slaves. Singing naked. Clapping. An occasional ducking of corked faces in icy water. Such are the functions over which I preside. Feasting of slaves. Can you? I will get elaborate into that. Okay. Yes. I'm like, are they feasting on slaves? But no, nope. no, nope. we will get into it's. It's a sort of celebration that they do for this time. Cool. Okay. 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 Um. So Romans would call out Io Saturnalia. So it's kind it. of like our Merry Christmas. Yeah. You know, you just see your other Roman on the street. Oh, Saturnalia. I'm actually going to say that to everybody. <laughs> now when I say Merry Christmas, I'm like, Ayo, Saturnalia. <laughs> yep. Loves it. Um, Saturnalia was a time for feasting and lavish banquets, goodwill, and generosity for the poor. That's nice. It is. Uh, all work was to cease during Saturnalia, even for the slaves. That's awesome yep and it gets even better they had a role reversal that they would do so all slaves were able to celebrate and some were even served by their masters wow so the slaves would still cook the food but the master would you know sit the slave at the head of the table and actually serve him his dinner so that day slaves could gamble they could do whatever they wanted to do just be free men for that celebration okay super cool yeah uh, the Roman state would cancel all executions, and it said war could not be declared during this time of celebration. That's really nice because, you know, stop the work, stop everything. It's all about joy and, and, and giving and generosity and all that. It's like, yep, awesome. Yep. Um, but it was also a lot of debauchery and drunkness as well. Oh, so, course. you know, people aren't going to work. They're just in the streets, you know. Drunken Going mess. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Singing naked. Um, I like that, actually. Sign me up. They, I read something that was like, could this be a precursor to, like, caroling? Because you go around and you sing, but these people were just singing. Naked. naked. I love it. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, so, like the poem states, the customs were gambling, singing, playing music, and, of course, feasting. Of course. Um, togas, which were the popular garment in Rome, were actually hung up for this celebration. Because they were naked. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, not everybody. Um, if you weren't naked, um, you wore bright colored dinner clothes called synthesis. Huh. Yep. You have to look this up. It's, yeah, it's pretty neat. And then they would wear a red... that's what we're wearing if we're not naked for our Saturnalia. <laughs> we, we will sh- wear our synthesis, bright colored dinner clothing. Yes, you can wear that. I'll wear, and, I'll wear my Saturnalia suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's said, too, that this was not a garment that you, like, wore out in public any time of the year. Like, it was your toga, but it was just for Saturnalia that cool. you brought it out and you wore it. Nice. Festive um, garb. Exactly. <laughs> they also donned a red pileus or a freedman's hat. So it's like that felt hat that they would wear. Um, and usually this was worn by free, freed slaves of the time. Okay. Anyone who got like their manumission to kind of put them apart, of mm-hmm. course. But this one time of year, everyone wore that hat, which symbolized everything. Equality. Freedom. Yep. Yeah. Um, this part is really fun. In some households, Romans would choose a mock king. Now, I'm going to try and say this. Bear friggin' with me. Uh, Also called the Saturnalicious? No. (laughs) What? Do you want me to look? Can I look? It's like Saturnalicious. Saturnalicious. Princeps. Saturnalicious? Yeah, (laughs) sure. (laughs) Um... Saturnalucius, princeps, or leader of Saturnalia. Uh, The chosen one would usually be a lower member of the family, and their job during this time was just to cause mischief. Nice. Yep. Uh, They also called it the, like, Lord of Misrule. That was, like, another translation. That is kind of quirky and fun. Yeah, right? You just choose him, and he just runs around either insulting guests, or he'll wear, like, crazy clothing. Yeah. Or no clothing. Sounds like my kid. It, yeah, he can be the Lord of Misrule this year. Yeah, he is. Good, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, it just sounds like a good fucking time. Yeah, it does. Uh, 
Saturnalia was also a time for gift giving. So the celebration of Sigillaria occurred on the last days of the festival. So that's like the culmination of Saturnalia. Huh. Um, and that's when they would exchange their gifts, kind of like Christmas. Christmas you yeah. have your day and you exchange your gifts. Um, Sigilla, Sig sure, uh, were pottery or wax figures usually made to resemble the gods, and they were an extremely popular gift. Um, gifts were usually procured from a shop or handmade, so very, you know, popular to, like, make your own Sigilla. Sigilla. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, gifts included dolls, caged birds, and then the most common were, like, wax paper candles. Huh. So you could brighten up the wintry darkness. Wax paper candles. What's yeah. That? It's just like a wax paper. It's like not like full okay, wax. Okay, gotcha. But it'll still burn kind of like wax. Like like wax paper, like duh, like bacon. Yeah, and they had a name, but each different place had a different name. Like one of it was like Siri, C-E-R-E-I. Okay. And then another one was like Sirius. What, what pretty much was just wax paper. Basically, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> okay. they did have a name, but I saw like two different ones. So I'm like, I'm not saying both of those hard words. Okay? Yeah, no, my man. Uh, so it does sound very similar to our Christmas traditions. So that does make a lot of sense mm -hmm. um, because Christmas kind of pulls a lot of different traditions from a lot of different places, especially a lot of pagan holidays. Yeah. Um, in 312 CE, which is Common Era or AD, if you must. Um, the Emperor Constantine officially converted to Christianity. He stopped all persecution of other religions. So by the 4th century, Christmas took over as the main Roman celebration. They adopted many of the traditions of Saturnalia, including the time of year. Mm -hmm. um, and then Saturnalia would be celebrated right alongside Christmas for another century. So Romans were... They're getting all the time going getting, during yeah, Christmas, yeah. Christmas, Saturnalia. Saturnalia, all of it. But unfortunately, Christmas does reign supreme, and mm -hmm. Saturnalia did kind of fall to the wayside. There. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I love it. Yeah, do you, what do you think? Like, does it sound like it definitely has? Yeah, influences absolutely. on our Christmas. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the traditions besides the Christian part of Christmas came mm -hmm. from pagan roots anyway. Yeah. And so it definitely makes sense. Um, just a raucous yeah. time where you just party and you eat and just... Yeah. If All you it needs is Santa that, throwing in there and I would be just in my heyday. Perfect, yeah. I'm a big Santa fan. I love Santa. <laughs> if you look at the picture document, you will see a picture and they're like... Joyous, just, they're wearing their dinner clothes. Yes, they're yeah. just, you know, going a little wild and okay. just having a good time. So we obviously need to go to Goodwill, pick up some dinner clothes. Okay. And then we'll have it, like, the Saturday. Okay, yeah, yeah. Feast, drinks. Yep. And Finney will be the Lord of Misrule. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sounds great. Okay. Sounds like a great I time. don't have any wax paper, unfortunately. Well, we could go find some. I'll get some soap and I'll carve you... <laughs> I'll carve you a little dude, a sigilla. sigilla. A sigilla. Yeah, it's too late to order shit now. Sigilla. Sigilla? Let's say sigilla. Sigilla. Because it's got that G in there. Sigilla. 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 All right, so we're just going to move along then after that raucous, caucus, awesome time. Yeah, we partying, man. Yeah, we're not going to be so partying now, but that's, that's all okay. right. That's all right. What do you got for me today? Mine isn't true crime either, but it's still legend, and it's not the brightest of legends. It's not the darkest of legends. We're not going Krampus on ya. But if anyone has watched the newest Christmas Chronicles with Kurt Russell, they'll have heard of the of the character Belschnickel. Or The Office. Or that, but I, I had never, ever heard of this character, being a diehard Santa fan myself. I'm just a Santa girl. <laughs> and... So, Belschnickel is a man out of German lore. He was made super popular by the Pennsylvania Dutch. Mm -hmm. So, Santa or Saint Nick or Santa Claus actually originates in Germany also. Yeah. Uh, and so, this is kind of like, I guess, Germany is just a Christmassy place. They come up with a whole bunch of different Christmassy... I don't know about Krampus, but it kind of sounds German also. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, he wears... Belschnickel wears a coat of furs 
that I would say might as well be considered the Frankenstein coat because it is often patchy pieces of like different furs. Okay. Um, it's a good descriptor. Yeah. He would also apparently rub coal on his face. My. And I guess he looked just kind of grimy and not appealing like Santa. Just dark and dingy compared to like bright and cheery. While he still had the furs aspect. You know, Santa wears his velvet and his fur on his coat and stuff. But just cozy and jolly. Yeah. That's yeah. not Belschnickel. Nope. <laughs> he would also carry around a switch. Um, there are many things called a switch, and I didn't know exactly what the fuck they were talking about, so... Dictionary yeah. time! I swear, every episode. A switch is a very flimsy tree branch that would be used as a whip. Mm-hmm. A mm-hmm. whip. Yep. Yes, so, like, we would have with our willow tree, like, a lot of these really flimsy tree branches, and that's kind of what I imagine. He would bring around, like, a car- like a bunch of those. Yep. And... Use that. So, some articles say he was kind of a mix between Santa and Krampus because Belschnickel ties together the torture of Krampus and the dark side of Krampus with the gift giving of Santa. Now, there are some legends that go super dark with Belschnickel, but I did not read that as the going Belschnickel. I mean, I read that he would kidnap kids and their parents would never see him. I think that's more of a Krampus thing. I did not read a lot about that with Belschnickel, so I did not mention that legend here. So the legend goes on that some random day in December, usually like within the first week or or the the week or two before Christmas, uh, before St. Nick comes around, the Belschnickel makes his appearance. He will rap on the windows of the home with his switch until he is let in. So you have this grimy, weird guy coming around with a tree branch, slamming on your windows, which is super creepy, okay? (laughs) The children would all run and hide, understandably, because they knew the legend, they knew what Belschnickel was there for, Mm -hmm. and he's ugly and grimy and dingy and scary, wrapping on your windows with tree branches. (laughs) Uh. They were dreading his inevitable questions that he will ask in responses, screaming, Der Belschnickel, which simply means the Belschnickel in Mm. American. So Der, D-E-R, Der Belschnickel is is the Belschnickel. The parents would go and grab the children from where they were hiding and present them to the Belschnickel. Because That's unlike terrifying. Santa Claus, the kids are supposed to see and meet the Belschnickel. So Santa's supposed to be elusive. You're not supposed to see uh-huh. him. The parents want you to see the Belschnickel. Belschnickel is the parents' sidekick. Yeah, you're he's gonna trying do to whip better. him into, into uh-huh. the line. You oh, know, God. you better be good. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> um... Belschnickel was not presented this way in the movie, but I was very interested to read this story and know the, the legend. So, Because I do have Dutch in my family. I uh-huh, same. haven't gone back all the way with that, but uh, Belschnickel would then ask a simple question of the children. Have you been bad or good? Not naughty or nice, but have you been bad or yep. good? They say you cannot lie to the Belschnickel because like Santa, he already knows. He does want to see if he will be lied to because that will affect his rulings. So there are two similar stories but different versions I read. The first was that Belschnickel would ask the question if the kids had been good or bad. If the child says yes and they're being honest, then he rewards them with treats like nuts, candies, or cookies. Mm -hmm. If the child admitted that they'd been bad, they would get wrapped on the back of their hand with his switch. If the child flat out lied and said yes when he knew that they were not good, he would whip them on their backside with his switch. My. Yeah, so it's not just giving kids coal and being like, here's your present. He is literally... Switching you. Switching you. Oh my gosh. (laughs) That's terrifying. I would not want this day to come. Yeah. Like, it's not like Santa is like, oh, Santa's coming tonight. Oh, my gosh, I can't wait to go to bed and you can't sleep. But I would be terrified. Yeah, like these kids, they were running and hiding. Uh, No, thanks. Oh, it's that day again. Yeah, exactly. Not the (laughs) Belschnickel. You know, I can't wait for Santa. But I did read that in another version that even if you were bad, he would still reward you with the treats after. After the switch. But that's not the going version. I don't like it. I don't either. Uh, don't whip my kid. You can talk to them sternly, but don't whip them. 
Just have a naughty or nice list. I know. And send else, I guess. Just send do do something else. Yeah, right. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the other version I read was that he would still come with his pockets full of those treats. He would toss them on the floor and let them scatter. And if the kids showed restraint toward the candy, then they'd be rewarded if they didn't like dive in and greedily take take, take it take, off. Yeah. You know, uh, if the child dove right in and took most of the treats for themselves, then they would be punished because they are a greedy child. Um, I kind of get the Belschnickel. I understand yeah, the concept yeah, and the pencil sidekick, but uh, it's not nice. It's not. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, he was a love him or hate him kind of guy. If the kids were good all year and knew in their hearts to be true that they were good, they most likely enjoyed the tradition of the Belschnickel. Yep. For the bad kids, they definitely didn't like the Belschnickel. I found a little poem on him that I'm going to read. It's okay. called Christmas Time in the Land of Belschnickel. I had to do a little research as to the author. I believe it's by a man named Matthew Burns. There is a land of wilderness glades and craggy cliffs, of hidden coves and ancient forests, home of the Belschnickel. Among this dark forest, under the roots of a great oak tree, there is a limestone cavern that is completely hidden from view. In this dank cavern, Belschnickel makes his home. He is hairy and covered in animal pelts with moss in his hair and lichens on his skin. He lives in the cave with his loyal servant, Rupert. Rupert is donned in the same manner as Belschnickel, only he is even dirtier. Blackened from the soot of many fires and smudged with the grease of many meals, each year when it gets to be about this time of year, when the leaves have been shed, the winter winds start to howl, and the forest creatures prepare for winter in their own way. Belschnickel and Rupert start plotting. Plotting mischief of, and mayhem of wreaking havoc on the intruders who live in their valley. They regale in the events of seasons past when they scattered, when they, I'm sorry, when they scared cattle, carried away children, and spread fear through the countryside. Now, this poem is not what the legend I read, but we're going to keep going. <laughs> Belschnickel has also been known to feed wild onions to the dairy cows, so their milk will taste of onions and be unfit <laughs> for use by the intruders. But most of all, Belschnickel and Rupert await Christmas Eve when everyone is indoors, reveling in the merriment of the season. That's when Belschnickel becomes most embittered for being disturbed. He loves the winter, winter solstice, but can't even bay at the moon without the intruders hunting him with their ferocious hounds. Belschnickel reckons that if he can't celebrate, neither will they. Late in the night, he and Rupert go from house to house, prying open the windows and breaking down doors. Seeking vengeance, they, they will yank children from their slumber and beat them with switches. Rupert ho hopes to toss a few in his sack as well. At these thoughts, pure joy shows on the face of Belschnickel and Rupert. Primitive chuckles erupt from Rupert's snaggled mouth, and they are both anxious for night to fall and to begin their night of havoc. My. Yeah, so it sounds like back, back, back in the day, he might have been way worse than what the Pennsylvania Dutch are celebrating now. Uh, yeah. Um. And there's a lot of darkness in... Christmas lore and legend. Yeah. Actually, I just learned about the true story of, like, Good King Wenceslas because I love the song, and I have a book that goes along with it that we'd read every year for Christmas, and it is not pleasant. Like, Good King no. Wenceslas was actually murdered, okay? And he was a very gracious giving man, so. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did read about the nasty sack they would carry around, <laughs> uh, but it wasn't mentioned a lot. This poem mentions, I think, a lot of the way back yeah legend. the old old like a grim's lore. yeah a grim's yeah. tale oof so that's oof it for the belschnickel so short, short and not so sweet i'll take my jolly man in a red and white suit any day, day with his sleigh and the reindeer uh-huh <sighs> and uh yeah that's all i've got for you so that's christmas we when we were kids there is another thing you celebrate saint nicholas day huh and you put your shoes outside 
next to the door and then you wake up and there's like a little treat inside your shoe. Huh. And my mom and dad used to do that for us every now and again. Yeah. And it was just so fun because you have like your Christmas, of course, but this is yeah. earlier in the month and you put your shoes out oh, and then you get cute. like a cute little. I she- actually wouldn't want to do that though because my feet really stink and you would not want to put treats in my shoe. <laughs> I don't think I'd want treats in my <laughs> shoe anyway. <laughs> Um, my mom did it for my sister this year, though, because it was like... Yeah. And the candy was just laying there. She's just like, oh, I'm just going to put this in her shoe. Yeah. And she wakes up and like, yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. My That's... dirty ass friggin' sneakers when I was a kid. Oh, my God. All the just mud and gook. Thank God they wouldn't pick my tennis shoes. Oh, <laughs> Or any shoes these days. Sorry, guys. But women are supposed to have stinky feet. <laughs> I don't... I think... I think it was, like, a special shoe that you probably had for, like, that the night or something, thing, you know? Yeah. yeah, it probably wasn't like your janky-ass shoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. So that's Christmas, guys, Um, and you're listening to this on Christmas, or, I mean, maybe you're not, but it's coming out on Christmas. Which is cool, so, man. Yeah, get jolly, drink some hot cocoa around the tree. And our next episode, I believe, will be coming out on... New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Eve. Right at midnight. So right at midnight. Kiss your honey and, and then, then listen, listen to, to the more than, than murder. murder. <laughs> Perfect Cheers. way to end 2021. the night. 2021. Turn on more than murder. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. So, well, yeah, we will not be live. No. Because it's Christmas. It's Christmas. We're, we're taking the day off, guys. We might switch it up and go on a weekend or something, mm-hmm. though, just to say mm-hmm. hi to y'all. Because we yeah. do love you. We love going live. And if we're doing our own Saturnalia on Saturday, whether it be before you hear this or tomorrow, we'll go live maybe during Saturnalia. Oh, yeah. And then we'll say, I go oh, Saturnalia. Saturnalia. <laughs> and and uh, I think we can say this right now, though. We'll see them next year. Oh, boy. We will see you next we'll year. We'll see you next year. I know. I'm a corny motherfucker. Yep, one of those. That's okay, though. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do it. All right, you guys. It was short and it was sweet. Um, You, you can, have to do, yeah, you have to do that. Yeah, so uh, follow us on Facebook. At More Than Murder. Follow us on Twitter at More Than Underscore Murder. And on the Insta at More Than Murder Pod. Uh-huh. Also, find us on YouTube, guys. Just type it in the search box. More than murder. Easy yes. as that. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, email us if you want to just say hi, wish us a Merry Christmas, anything. Uh, you can email us at the Gmail, more than murder pot at gmail.com. I didn't say it last episode. I did not say email us at the Gmail. Oh. You did this year. Or oh. this episode. <laughs> this year. <laughs> this year. <laughs> this year. <laughs> this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. <clears throat> We're out of here. We outie. Have a good one. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. See you next we love year. Y'all. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Y'all. <laughs>